Hey there everybody, and today I want to give you 10 tips on how streamers can look after their mental health. Hey there everyone, my name's Dave, aka Mindset Daddy. And today I want to talk to you about streamers' mental health. Now, I've been a mental health coach for years, but I've only been a streamer for just over one year. And if you do want to catch me, it's twitch.tv slash Mindset by Dave, where you can come and have these kinds of chats live, plus the Discord, links are below. And I want to give you my top 10 tips on how to look after your mental health as a streamer. This isn't going to be any tips or advice on how to look after other people's mental health if you are a mental health streamer. We might do a completely separate video on that. If there's enough demand for it, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, on with the tips. Tip number one. Be yourself. We're gonna get the cliched one out of the way first so you can do all your eye rolling and all the rest of it, but ultimately, this is way more important than it comes to mental health. Now, if you are a VTuber, this is gonna be a little bit different. If you're putting on a persona, cool. Know who that persona is and be that persona. Be that persona 100% of the time. But if that's not you, be yourself. To the best of your abilities, be yourself. One of the reasons for this being is the fact that it takes a lot of mental capacity to keep the mask on. It takes a lot of mental capacity to hide away parts of your own mental health from other people. Because there's a little task manager running away up there the whole time that's saying, hope they don't find out, hope they don't find out, how can I make sure they don't find out, make sure they don't find out, don't show it, don't slip, don't slip, don't slip, don't slip. And that in itself is enough to actually give you anxiety or at least contribute towards anxiety and or depression. It's certainly enough to give you stress and stress contributes to all of these things. So by being yourself, it also gets rid of a lot of imposter syndrome because people can never call you out on being you. It's the one thing that you have 100% authority on. So being yourself is actually, it may be a cliche, but it's a nice, big, chunky piece of advice that'll really help get you somewhere. Number two, set up your environment for you. Now, it's so tempting to set up the environment that you stream in so that it looks good for the people on the stream. But you want the things in your environment and with like, for example, your chair, for example, all the things in the background, your lighting, all of these things, you want them to make you as comfortable as humanly possible. You need to think about how each of these things within the setup are set for you, because we're told constantly to put the viewers first, but ultimately, if we're not looking out for our own comfort in there, we're just gonna get more and more tired, more and more cranky, more and more uncomfortable as streams go on. And that in itself, those physical discomforts can actually lead to a lot of stress again, and a lot of mental discomfort. So make sure that your environment is set up for you. Number three, your interaction on the stream needs to be set up for you too, including things like channel point redemptions. Now, you might set channel point redemptions that seem really fun and really engaging for your audience, but then six months later, those same channel point redemptions, you might be kind of rolling your eyes and thinking, oh, someone redeeming that again? And because people interact with them a lot, you might feel inclined to not want to remove those things. But ultimately, if you are every single time that that channel point redemption gets redeemed, feeling like you're getting chipped away at, you're going to get resentful. You're going to start hating actually going on stream. You're going to think, oh, I hope that doesn't get redeemed this time around. If that's happening for you, remove it, change it, put a different one up there, change the level so it's harder for people to actually interact with it. And only people that have been on the stream for a long period of time might be able to actually have the channel points for it. But just make sure that the level of interactivity it's there, obviously, to entertain and to engage your audience, but it can't be things that throw you off your game and make you feel resentful every single time that they get set off. Number four, and this is going to sound really weird from a person who's drinking coffee whilst making this and has a sneak energy bloody shaker on his desk, but be mindful of how much caffeine you have. I know it's super tempting because of people like Sneak and people like G4, not affiliated with either, by the way, because of those companies, they are big sponsors within Twitch and within gaming. So 
it's really tempting to actually, you know, stand for these products every single time. To have a couple of scoops of sneak or to have a couple of scoops of G Fuel, you know, it's really tempting to actually do this. But each individual one of us will have a different tolerance to caffeine. Mine is moderately low and I discovered mine years ago from being in the gym. I know that if I go over a certain amount of caffeine, it actually starts to feel like anxiety. It's not anxiety but it's the physiological feedback that I would get from anxiety. So then, you know, brain starts questioning, am I anxious? And therefore I start feeling anxious and the whole thing can just set me off in a spiral. So for me, I can literally have one energy drink and one coffee in the space of a 24 hour period. And you know, then that's it. On top of that, we're gonna be talking about sleep in a little bit, but it will affect your sleep, especially if you're having it later on in your streams. So do limit it. Number five. Something else that will impact your sleep and your health, physical and mental, 24 hour and marathon streams. Okay, I know you might be watching this thinking, but Dave, you did a 27 hour one in February and you're talking about doing a 36 hour one in June. Yeah, June, 2022. That's actually why it's so far away. I know what toll that that 26 hour stream had on my body. And I did that mindfully. I also allocated time off in the preceding days, the days before it and the days after it, so that I could actually rest going in and recover coming out. It was a well thought out thing. It was, I treated that as an endurance event as I might've done a physical endurance event like a Toughest Mudder. I prepared for it, trained for it, and actually then allocated time for recovery. But it's still really messed with my body clock and really messed with just my overall feelings and my health. I was very, very run down about three to four days after the event. So just be aware of them. I'm not saying don't do them. They're a lot of fun and they, they're a lot of, they're very engaging for people at times, but please be aware that they will put a lot of strain on you mentally. So make sure that if you are doing them, you are mindful of that. Number six, as I just said, caffeine, 24 hour streams, they impact our sleep. Make sure you get in sleep. It's one of the biggest factors that contribute towards our overall health. And unfortunately, within streamer and gamer culture, sleep schedules are sort of this weird thing. I've kind of we've got a bit of a joke in our community that I'm the only streamer that actually has one because I want to be up for the gym in the morning and that's been great. While the gym was closed, my sleep schedule was all over the place. And I really noticed the difference. Being well rested versus not being well rested is going to, that's going to exacerbate everything that you're experiencing. So the sleep's not gonna be the be all and end all, but what it will do is it will certainly exacerbate everything that is already there. If you're prone to anxiety, well, when you're sleep deprived, you're gonna be more prone to anxiety. If you're prone to stress or you're prone to depression with sleep deprivation, again, you are gonna be much more prone to those things. Remember that with the caffeine, caffeine actually is in your system for a very, very long time. So if you're having caffeine later in the day to get towards through towards the end of a stream it's actually going to find it really hard to shut off i i limit my caffeine my last caffeine goes into me before 4 p.m and then after that i don't take on any more caffeine and the other thing is come off the stream at early and think about what you're going to do for your wind down time when you first come off a stream your brain is not going to be in even if you might be feeling physically tired your brain's going to be feeling wired you're not going to be in the mindset to go straight to sleep so think about that and maybe set yourself a little wind down time or some wind down activities for afterwards. Maybe even debrief the stream in your head, write it down on paper the things that your brain's telling you you must remember. Get those things out of your head. I do have a full extra video on sleep from Mental Health Awareness Week last year, which I will link to now. Number seven, turn off your view account. I've got an extra whole video on this as well, which again, I'll link to above, but your view accounts, for very few of us, it leads to anything good. But your your energy, the dedication you're given to that stream can actually be varied by that view account. And if that is the case, it's gonna cause you some problems in the long term. Seeing that view account go up, absolutely great for us. Seeing that view account go down, 
it's terrible for you. Eventually, you're probably going to want to turn it off because let's say you do make it big and instead of your view account going up and down in terms of one to two, it's going up and down in terms of one to 200 or even a thousand. On my son's birthday, we raided Dan TDM on the way out of the stream and his viewership fluctuated by thousands at a time while we were even watching it for that short space of time. I know what it feels like to go from 23 to 20 viewers, or actually weirdly, 23 to 19, you know, when the first number changes, you kind of feel within that bracket. It's what they do with prices when they put them at £1.99 or whatever. When you're within that bracket, it's okay, but as soon as the first number changes, it just, it messes with you. Now imagine that when your numbers are actually fluctuating in terms of tens, hundreds, or even thousands. It's gonna impact your own mental health and your own desire to actually continue with that stream. And then that's gonna be reflective in the way that you actually perform on the stream, which becomes a sort of negative spiral anyway, because that then might make you less engaging, might make the people want to engage with you less, and voila, you end up with even less numbers. It's good when it's on the way up, but if you find that it is stressing you out, if you find that you're feelings, your vibe, your energy levels are attached to that number, switch that number off. Number eight, visualize the stream going well. This is something I like to do, especially now that the view account is off. I look into the camera and visualize one really happy audience member really vibing with whatever I'm saying. I imagine that I'm looking into the eyes of someone who's there, like nodding along, hanging on my every word, really enjoying what you're doing. This will be a little bit different for gaming streamers because you're not looking at the camera. But if you imagine that you've got an entire room full of people just like shocked and in awe at your gameplay, it's actually going to really push you on and motivate you to move further and the great thing is especially without that view count there we've not got anything to tell us that this isn't a reality you may think that this sounds like kidding yourself right but here's the thing you're already kidding yourself and that's why sometimes you're anxious to hit that go live button in the first place because you're kidding yourself with the worst case scenario you're asking yourself the question what if nobody turns up what if i'm talking to an empty room and it's just crickets what if nobody enjoys this what if what if what if we go to those worst case scenarios and that causes anxiety that can make it so it's really really difficult to actually press go live i know this because i experienced this and this is how i override it myself for me sometimes i need need to see those first few messages come into chat before I actually comfortably settle into a stream. Now, if I just visualize me in that full flow later on, then actually it makes me more engaging. It makes me more talkative in the instant that I first hit go live. And as a result, it doesn't really matter if anyone's put anything in chat. Weirdly, the more engaging you are, the more engaging and engaged your audience tends to be. So make sure that if you visualize it, going well sit about it think about it how will i feel how would i feel if i had 100 viewers in there and they were all absolutely loving it imagine it you've seen it like maybe if you've watched a games done quick stream and you see it when the speedrunners are there and like the audience are like clapping at a particular move and they just sit there they have that nice little smile on their face while they're somehow holding it down in a speed run it's great to actually see that expression on their face imagine that for you i'm actually doing it while i'm talking through this and it feels absolutely amazing i think i might go speed run celeste straight after they're making this video Number nine, don't try and predict trends on one stream. If you change something, i.e. the game or the style of your stream, your overlay, things like that, the format of it, if you're doing a just chatting stream, if you bring on guests for the first time, for example, or if you've always got guests on you do a solo show, don't judge the changes that you make on one stream. Give it a good go because actually it might, there's so many different reasons in which that stream might not have done well that day. And we're not talking about looking at your stats afterwards here rather than looking at the viewer count while it's online. But there's so many different reasons why that stream could have not done so well that day. Obviously we've got all kinds of changes around lockdowns and COVID and all that stuff going on in the world right now. So there's different times that there are different people that are actually suddenly allowed out of the house. There's different streamers, you know, Harris Heller's just disappeared off to YouTube. So there might be people that aren't sat in the Twitch app now because of that, that would have always come to you before. 
that they're not getting the maybe those notifications or five people go to the toilet at the same time. You know, it does actually happen. There's so many different reasons why one particular stream might not do as well as others that aren't always related to the change you've made in the content. So if you're gonna try out different trends, if you wanna try out different ideas, give them a good chance to be able to actually settle in, for people to get used to the fact that you're doing that. Same with different stream times. Give it a chance for people to settle in to those things. And basically, don't do what I do. Again, this, this is the piece of advice in this list that I probably need the most. Don't look at mountains with a magnifying glass. Take a step back, look at your big picture, give it a chance for the trend to actually settle in before you make any changes. And number 10, we're finishing on a cliche as well as starting with one, but fill up your cup before you fill up anyone else's. As I said earlier, this isn't a video for streamers who are looking after other people's mental health. This is how to look after your mental health, but you're gonna be giving your energy to everybody. And that could be giving your energy directly through the stream or trying to keep up with everybody in every DM on every social media platform, trying to keep on top of all the social media platforms at the same time, and just feeling like you're being pulled in absolutely every direction. Do I look like I can relate? I certainly can. Give yourself a break from that and make sure that you're actually tending to your own needs, tending to your own energy, filling up your cup. Because ultimately, if you continue to give every quantity of hours to everybody else, the quality of those hours is going to go down, which again is going to give you feedback, make you feel bad about the fact that you're not showing up on the best of your game. If you want to show up on the best of your game, sometimes you have to skip a game. Sometimes you have to take a game on the bench. Sometimes you have to take a rest day, rest week, rest month. If you need to take it, take it. This is why on my stream we have Fill Your Cup Thursday, which is a meditation stream that I, as you might have noticed, when I talk through visualizations, I can't help but do them myself. So when I talk talk other people through meditations, I meditate too. That stream, there's no pressure on me on that stream. I turn up, we talk through a meditation, I take some time for myself, we have coffee, it's great. And it's in there, going almost back to that sort of point two and three. It's a part of the stream that serves me as well as serving the audience at the same time. But you gotta scratch your itch. Why do I have that sleep schedule? So I can get up and go to the gym. Because if I go to the gym, I feel better for the rest of the day. You get a better version of me. It is not selfish, it is self first. All right, that's it. My 10 tips on how you, as a streamer, can better look after your mental health. If you do want that video about how to help other people with their mental health ethically, and within terms of service, of course. Drop me a comment below, and if we get enough of those, then yeah, if there's enough of demand for it, then we'll go into that. And again, if you wanna check me out on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash mindset by Dave. And also Discord link in the descriptions below. I will see you all soon. And to sign off, I'm gonna put on my Kralo. It's a crown, it's a halo, it's a Kralo. I'll see you soon. <laughs>